Prakash, uh, sorry to cut you off and thank you for your thoughts, Ashutosh and Kunal as well. The State Bank of India management is now addressing the media on their second thank quarter you numbers. Very much Listen for in. The press conference for the announcement of the quarter two results of financial year 23. Uh, well, of course, we are meeting after a long time in the physical mode. I hope all of you are keeping very well in terms of your health and safety at, at the family. Uh, well, as far as the global economic activity is uh, is concerned, it is experiencing a broad base and sharper than expected slowdown. With inflation being higher in the developed markets as compared to emerging market economies, the cost of living crisis tightening. Financial conditions in most of the regions are uh, have got tightened. Russia's inflation of uh, inv invasion of Ukraine and the lingering COVID-19 pandemic all weigh very heavily on the outlook. However, in such uncertain and fragile global economic environment, the Indian economy has showed its resilience all these years. Indicators of aggregate demand indicate that the onset of the festive season and the pent-up demand kept the growth impulses very strong. Several high-frequency indicators remain upbeat. The withdrawal of the southwest monsoon has aided travel, hospitality, and the construction sectors. Electricity generation picked up in September. The rural demand indicators have picked up, with domestic sales of two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and the motorcycles increasing YOY, as well as over the pre-pandemic levels. Domestic tractor sales have picked up sharply to an 11-month high in September. Credit growth in the banking system has continued to grow in double digit in this financial year as against the single digit growth in the last year. With economic activity gaining momentum, there will be an optimistic outlook for demand conditions, and we expect credit growth to, to continue in the near term. At State Bank of India, our long-term strategy has been to build sufficient resilience in our balance sheet so as to absorb the volatilities caused by such external events. As a result, we have not, been, not only been able to ride through the difficult times, but we have been able to post consistently improving outcomes in business, profitability, and asset quality parameters. I am pleased to announce that during this quarter, we have posted the highest ever quarterly profit of 13,265 crores. Our business growth numbers are good, and in terms of asset quality, our, our net NP has dropped well below 1%. Let me now give some color on the bank's numbers for the quarter. The net profit for the quarter increased by 73.93% on a YOY basis to 13,265 crores, while operating profit at Rs 21,120 crores increased by 17%. ROA of, of the bank for the half-year period improved by 15 basis point on YOY -by basis to 0 0.76, and ROE improved by 291 basis point on YOY -by basis to 16.08. It may not be out of place to mention that the ROA, ROA for the quarter stands at 1.04. Most other core profitability metrics have also improved over previous year as well as sequentially. Net interest income increased by 12.83% by OI on the back of improved credit offtake in all segments and continuous improvement in the asset quality. Domestic NIM has improved by a 5 basis point by OI and 32 basis points sequentially. Fee income, is a, it is essentially because in the last, uh, uh, if we look at the quarter two of the financial 21-22, we had some one-offs. That is the reason why it is looking a little subdued. But if we ignore that, then we are actually in the range of about 35 basis point improvement on a YOY basis too. Fee income grew by 10.21% YOY. Our cost to asset continues to remain <coughs> among the lowest in the industry, reflecting our efforts to build long-term cost efficiencies. On the business front, credit growth has continued to trend upward as the bank has posted a YOY growth of almost 20% with growth coming from all the segments. Corporate advances grew by more than 21% by OI, with bulk of growth coming from the large corporates. Personal credit, retail credit grew by almost 19% by OI, with home loan growth 
registering a growth of almost about 15 percent and other personal loans have grown almost at, at the rate of 25 percent on a YOY basis. SME and agri segment advances also posted double digit growth of 11 percent and 13 percent YOY respectively. Domestic deposit grew at the rate of 9.16 percent YOY driven by the growth in savings wing deposit and the term deposit. Our foreign offices have continued to perform well with good growth in advances as well as deposits. Advances portfolio at foreign offices grew by 30 percent by OI with growth coming from local lending, trade, finance as well as India linked loans. Here also I would like to mention that if we look at the dollar denominated growth it is about 18 percent, the rest of the 12 percent growth is essentially coming on account of the rupee depreciation vis a vis dollar. Sector wise growth has come mainly in OMC, banking and financial services and IT services. Deposit at foreign offices grew by 35 percent. Coming to the asset quality, we continue to post improving outcomes. Our net NPA ratio has come down below 1 percent mark and stands at 0.80 percent only at the end of quarter two financial year 23. With a YOY decline of 72 basis point, gross NPA ratio stands at 3.52 percent. This is also down by 138 basis point. Slippage ratio for the quarter stands at 0.33 percent and is lower by 33 basis point by OY. The consistently improving asset quality is also reflected in our credit cost, which stands at 28 basis point for the quarter and is down by 15 basis point by OY basis. On the restructuring front, as at the end of quarter two financial year 23, our total exposure under COVID resolution plan 1.0 and 2.0 stands at 27,336 crore. The restructuring book has behaved very well with 9 percent of the current exposure falling under SMA 1 and SMA 2 category. We are as against that we are holding a provision of almost uh, of 30 percent and that actually gives us a enough confidence that we should be in a position to handle this book also without any impact on the balance sheet. The bank remains very well capitalized and we expect that our internal accruals will be adequate to take care of the normal business growth requirements. Our capital adequacy ratio without adding the profit for the half year stands at 13.51 percent and CT1 ratio at 9.53 percent are well above the regulatory requirement. Digital leadership we have continued to embrace digital in a big way and digital continues to be an important acquisition engine for the bank across its assets and liabilities product. During the quarter we have sourced 62 percent of the savings account through the digital means and 45 percent of the retail assets through YONO. Our subsidiaries have also consistently performed well and continue to create significant value for all the stakeholders and most importantly for the customers. Most of our subsidiaries are leaders in their respective segment. We will continue to nurture these subsidiaries and see them creating value for their own shareholders as well as the shareholders of SBI. Overall, it has been a good performance and we expect further improvement in our, in our performance going forward. With these remarks, I now open the floor for questions from your end. Thank you. Sir, you, you talked about this 20% credit growth. Uh, I'm just trying to 21% credit growth and you said that it's likely to sustain going ahead. Uh, your deposit growth is about 10 percentage points lower uh, than the credit growth. How, how is this going to uh, you know, link up? See, one, of course, when it comes to deposit, base is about 40 trillion and loan base is about 30 trillion if we include the overseas offices also. Now, we also have got, uh, as far as the Treasury is concerned, we have got some investments which are as high as about 3.5 trillion, which we expect to unlock in the current financial year. So, that is one of the reasons why we are quite confident we can support the kind of growth, uh, the kind of credit growth we have seen till now. And apart from that, uh, we, we reckon the fact that deposit is a franchise and that is the reason why you would have observed in the in the in the last quarter we have started increasing the interest rate though very selectively but we are calibrating the interest rate in sync with what the market expect us to do so i think with these strategies i'm quite confident we should be in a position to meet the kind of credit growth requirement which is there in the economy the other part i want to ask you sir the sma sma one and two numbers are about that's highest in at least in europe 
No, actually, part of that uh, on that SMA one and two also, there were some accounts which we have already pulled back. It was one large credit uh, corporate account, about thousand seven hundred crore. We have already pulled back. Yeah, yeah, thousand seven hundred crore is one account which we have already pulled back. And apart from that, in the retail retail segment also, the we have pulled back uh, sizable component. Normally, what happens is that as on the 30th of uh, or the last day of the month, there are some SMAs which we do get to see. But uh, considering the fact that which are being put on the ground, which are actually evidence in the kind of, a, of, of the book which we have already demonstrated, that helps us in ensuring that SMA 1 and 2 remains within the range. And uh, we should be in a position to. What is the range? Uh, well, for each of the category, it differs. But yes, of course. Our effort uh, on, a go on an ongoing basis is to keep our uh, SMA2 uh, SMA at the lowest. SMA2 is at, at the lowest. Actually, much of it is in the SMA1. So uh, that is, it has actually there is a change in the trajectory. Earlier, SMA2 used to have bulk, but it has been brought down to SMA1. And uh, we are quite hopeful that uh, with the kind of efforts which you are putting on the ground, we should not have any challenge as well as the SMA1 and 2. So, so. Yeah, as far as the deposit is concerned, we are opening savings bank accounts in a very big way. And uh, if I if I may give you some kind of a color. 50, uh, 54 lakh. Uh, 54. Almost 54 lakh accounts we have opened. Opened in, in the half, first half. In, in the first half. 32 lakh accounts we have opened in one quarter. <coughs> 32. 32 lakh in one 32 quarter. 32 lakh accounts we have opened and almost about 20,000. Uh, 22,000 crore was the deposit in the first half. In the first half. We have opened from the savings account itself. So that is what, uh, that is the kind of a trajectory. And in the current account also, there is actually a bit of a change in the behavior. Earlier, uh, uh, because, uh, you know, when it comes to the current account market, almost about 49 percent of the current account market comes from the government sector and 45 percent comes from the trade and commerce. And traditionally, we were uh, focusing on the government sector, but now of late, Government sector has undergone a bit of a change in terms of managing their cash balances. They have started opening the mother and child accounts, wherein they are funding the accounts as and when they need the money at the downstream level. So that is the reason why perhaps we don't see that much kind of a money coming into the current account. But if we ignore that, in the trade and commerce, our current account growth is as high as about 8%. So which is actually a new, uh, new areas which we have started tapping. We have started offering CMPs, we have started offering uh, the ecosystem for acceptance, which is the POS, the QR codes. So those kind of things have helped us in, the, in, in this one quarter and, and we are quite confident that going forward it will really help us in really ensuring that we not only depend upon the government sector, but we will also make inroads into the trade and commerce and we should be in a position to capture the current account from all these segments also. So you mentioned 5 trillion worth of it. 3.5. No, no, these are the non SLR holders. No, 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 sir. I'll just supplement Please. what Chairman has yeah. said. We have a 3.85 crore excess SLR investments, which can be used for you know market borrowing, and uh, that will support our liquidity. You know, when uh, 3.85 lakh. As, as of today, yeah. but as in uh, September, 3.5 lakh. So, what happens is that when, uh, as I mentioned, that deposit is a franchise, so you uh, you know, when uh, we were now, we were not having enough opportunities to deploy, we invested all that into the securities market. So now we need that kind of money for lending, for supporting the lending operations, and we will be in a position to unlock. Yes. yes. This is interest on refund in comparison. It was, it was, it, it was about, about 1,200 crore? 1,923 crore. 1,923 crore was the interest on income tax refund. Refund. Which had come. So, so coming at the 50% I, I think, uh, <laughs> sir, sir, uh, sir, coming to the uh, unwinding of refund, that will definitely be 20% year on year growth. Will it sustain or will well, on that particular account, this quarter was a busy season. So that is the reason why the credit growth which you have seen is little on the higher side. 
but i still expect that uh, going by the current trend i expect that we should have a great growth somewhere in the range of 14 to 16% yeah, you have given 10 to 12% pardon this time you have given yeah so there's a there's an improvement because what we have seen is that the capacity utilization has improved and the kind of demand which is seen on ground the kind of demand which is seen on the ground that gives us the confidence that perhaps this kind of a growth can be seen but yes of course as you are aware that credit growth is a function of the real economy if the real, if, if the real economy is good then obviously the opportunities for the credit growth also are good what is the Sir, just one minute please one i minute. think in order to allow everybody to pose the question yeah maybe some order just one by one please and not more than two questions please. we have to cover all of you please so what do you ask about your corporate loan where is the demand from from i think capex related demand yeah we are seeing capex related demand also as well as the improvement in the working capital utilization that has also been seen and wanted an update on uh, nrcl nrcl account what yeah. is the nrcl of course now we are seeing good traction and uh, we are quite hopeful because it it always involves a process but the process is moving at a very uh, i would say rapid pace now so i think uh, hopefully in the current financial year we'll get to see any number you are that i don't think i'll be in a position to divulge i would not have it readily but yes of course we are seeing good traction so just a couple of followers in all about uh, almost about 40 accounts from the system are being handled by the nrcl 14 offers have been made Yeah, 14 offers have been made so far. So now, of course, the process is important. How much deposit? So this 25 million is going to be required for the financial year. No, no. Actually, much of it will depend upon how the industry grows, and I I can only say that uh, we will not be seen lagging behind the industry. Corporate. Credit corporate credit growth is coming from uh, generally we have seen in the infrastructure sector renewable power sector OMCs. and services. also omcs services and uh, and services essentially into the nbfc sector can we go on to the next person please yeah you had some question you had some question okay yeah. bostro Vostro accounts, Vostro okay. accounts, yeah, please. Uh, I'll just respond on. That. We have about 250 correspondent banks. We have reached out to all of them. Uh, see, they are working with their customers, you know, and also in some jurisdictions, there is a requirement of their local regulators also being uh, approached. So we we are uh, talking to all the correspondent banks. So far, uh, we have not opened any special Vostro account. Uh, we are very seriously working on that. 250 250 yeah yeah there are several banks which have come back and they are talking to us what is the modality and also we we require uh, regulator approval here to open special vest to and they also require their regulator approvals so it's all in the process and credit to 14 15% is for this financial year next person please No, of course it has because current account, as I as I as I explained, that has got a bearing on the casa ratio. So casa ratio today we are at about 44.51 percent. So I think uh, we should be our effort will be to improve this to at least 45 percent. And uh, when it comes to NIM, uh, I think uh, I would like to go by what I have been saying in the past also under promise and over deliver, and that will be the that will be the strategy. So our effort is to. as far as the domestic names are concerned we should be we should be in a position to maintain it somewhere around uh, what we have done this quarter but uh, i would like to restrict myself and uh, let's see how what will be the because you know there are many factors it's very very dynamic environment all of us are operating in so we have to be very mindful about those dynamic environments but nevertheless i think the trend should be maintained of improvement in in thank you yes. Sorry, I am unable to get you. What is the question? Bank or BTA? Yeah. Acha, yeah. How much of the debt is there from part of the debt from the 
much of net interest income? Net interest income from the treasury operation. No, income from resources, what is mentioned in our presentation, is basically. This is uh, 24,400 crores. Out of 80,000, 24,000 So, roughly about one, uh, one fourth. That is on the savings bank. What is the average deposit? Yeah, yeah. So, average deposit in our accounts would be somewhere around up, uh, about, 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 about a lakh, about a lakh, little less than a lakh. I think it depends, sir, because if you see the average deposit in terms of the complete average, then the number would be around 40, 43,000. But if you see the CSP, uh, corporate salary packet, more than a lakh. So, actually, it, it will depend upon different variants of the, of the savings bank account which you are maintaining. Yeah, go pick up. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, difficult to uh, really visualize a scenario like that, but much of it will depend upon uh, the appetite uh, of the growth loan growth and also the liquidity position of various banks. Various liquidity. banks. Liquidity. Liquidity position of various banks. Yes. It is difficult to say. Difficult to say. See the point is that the full transmission into the dip in, into the deposit accounts also means that the lending rates will go up like that. So, we have to keep that in mind. No, savings accounts are those who are opening the savings account, they have got transaction in mind. So, uh, actually savings accounts are essentially what we normally see majority comes from the salary accounts. Yeah. We have not seen such kind of a trend. Even mutual fund market is almost stagnant in terms of AGM level at about 37 trillion, 38 trillion. Can we move to the next? Either on the next one of the guidance which you had earlier given was on ROA on a quarterly basis and fraud charge 1%. Where do you see this by end of this year? See, this quarter we have already crossed 1.04 and uh, on, a, on, on a cumulative basis 0. we are at 0. 0. 0. 0.76. So, visual thinking, in fact, that guidance was for the year financial year 24. And the, you have only mentioned part of the guidance. The other guidance was the ROE of 15% plus. We have already crossed the ROE of 16%, cumulative basis also. And ROA, we have crossed 0.76%. So, uh, we hope that we should, be, we should be in position to at least achieve it, hopefully this year. If not this year, at least in the first quarter of the next year. We are much on track. I can say this much. Apart from that, sir, one of the positive surprises has come on part of provisioning for most of the analysts. Uh, I just want to understand that how should we read this number, this reduction in provisioning, and in the quarter going forward, uh, do you expect it to remain stable? In the See, this is a very clear reflection of our underwriting standards and our collection machinery on the ground. And also, uh, after we have set up this new call center, we are in a position to uh, go for the pre-delinquency calls also. So that is something which has helped us in ensuring that we should be in a position to keep this number low. And how will it really look like going forward if the economy stays the way it is? I think we should be in a position to be in around the same range going forward. But as I mentioned that, you know, there are many uncertainties across the globe. So how will it really impact our economy? Well, we can read to a limited ex extent and to the extent we are in a position to read, we are planning and ensuring that our balance sheet stays insulated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next person, please. Yeah, yeah. The CE ratio is uh, about 
See, at this rate, uh, what I expect is we can easily support the kind of growth of the credit growth which you have already planned. Uh, the other part is that we would rather like to plow back a good amount of profit. As of now, we have not reckoned the profit which you already earned. Almost about 19,000 crore plus of profit is there. And at this rate, if at all it continues, we should be in a position to plow back a good about, about almost about 25 to 30,000 crore worth of profit at the year end, which will actually take us to a very comfortable CET ratio. And, uh, the interest rates are expected to keep rising I think uh, this is a very, very hypothetical question. Let me tell you, if at all there is a visibility of demand, so long as there is a visibility of demand, the corporates and the entrepreneurs don't hesitate in putting up the capacity and producing. So I think uh, the way the demand is uh, showing very strong trends, uh, that is something which gives us the hope that uh, it should not have a significant impact. And otherwise also, when it comes to the credit cost in the total costing stack of the of any enterprise, it is not more than 10%. So I think more than the credit, it is actually the raw material cost. So from that point of view, I think so long as there is a visibility of demand, they can pass on these costs, that is that should not be a problem. I would not like to comment on this particular aspect in this meeting. This is essential for the quarterly results. Yeah. Uh, during the first quarter, you had uh, increased the deposit rates on the NRI. Uh, based on what the RBI is doing, what has been the experience with the Actually, has... that is, uh, I would say that NRI deposit, of course, uh, the flows have improved, but not the stock. Because what has happened is whatever interest rates we have increased, even in those geographies also, the interest rates are on the higher side. If you really ask me, today the developed markets or the, or the advanced markets have got higher interest rates as compared to country like us. So that is something that is one of the guiding factor for the NRIs also. They are looking for uh, interest rates which are, which are most suitable to them. Any numbers you can share? How much is the profit? Sorry? Uh, number, I, number I yeah, but you, you, you give the numbers. Yeah. Sir, last quarter you had made excess provisions on credit. Uh, what has been the excess this quarter? Have you last quarter we had done some uh, right, uh, the MTM losses were, were there, but this quarter we have not booked any MTM gain. Though we had MTM gain, but okay. but we have not booked it in our profit this uh, in these results. So the provisions take. Provisions stress. So provision stays for the pro huh? revaluation reserve. So yeah. Corporate growth is the fastest I think I've seen in a long time. It's beaten retail, retail also. Do you think this trend will continue given that you are seeing this sector which are growing or? Uh, hopefully, but let's see. As I mentioned, corporate is also the one which gets affected by uh, the economy per se. So let's see how really it really pans out. Just to, just to supplement on that, we also have to look at, given the current uh, liquidity situation system-wide as well as for the bank, we have got to be also selective in terms of where you would like to grow. So we will have to be discreet in terms of uh, how much you would like to lend and also at what price. So these two things will determine what will be the ultimate growth. So you, I think you may would like to be guided by Chairman's guidance. So the ultimate growth can be in the region of 4 to 16%, 14 to 16%. So this 21% uh, is something which, as you said, is, is very high. It was essentially on account of the busy season. Yeah, busy season and also the base effect. Yeah. Right. So, uh, for the whole year, the guidance of 14 to 16, as chairman said, can be the guidance. So, how much of profit is the refinance? Actually, uh, Navak is not much of it is a refinance. It is actually, there are some term loans which we have sanctioned, but uh, all are... Uh, Nothing like a refinance, and uh, also availment of the uh, of the working capital has improved. 
But one third of the growth is from the enhanced working capital utilization, and about two thirds is the new disbursements towards capex. Can you share the pipeline, sir? Yeah, pipeline is about, uh, is a strong pipeline, about 2.5 trillion. Sir, uh, what follows in the pipeline is 2,41,000. Yeah, crores. about 2.5. Pending disbursement is 1,27,000. So, in all, about 3.7 trillion is something which is in visibility, which is in sight. 2.4 trillion is the, uh, is the term loans, under process, very uh, which are under process. Can we go to the next person? We have come back to take our questions in time for me. How much time did you say about the pending disbursement? Dis dis pending disbursement is 1,27,000. Uh, so now we have our uh, NPAs at a very, very comfortable level. This is possibly once, I mean, uh, the best of 20 years old. So uh, would the bank be open to taking a little bit of risk now at this point in time on the corporate side, given that you know, you're know you you're projecting for a very high double-digit growth? So we have already, have our, our corporate book has grown at 20% plus. Yes. What else? And why? See, the point is, you are saying risk. Risk as it is, you know, any lending is a risk. But the only thing is, when we do the underwriting, we should see that it should suit our appetite. Appetite is not in terms of how much NPA we can have. Appetite rather should be that how much lower NPA we should have. So we should we should identify the risk. We should have the mitigants in place. And so long as we are in a position to do that. We will not like to touch uh, the the credit, which is which is not in line with our uh, risk appetite. So you're yes, for an NPA range at the gross level around one, one We would like to keep it as low as possible. Just one clarification, sir. Uh, your uh, foreign loan book, uh, corporate loan book, is also being very high there. Is it largely Indian companies borrowing? Or? Not nearly. No, not really. It is actually it is about sixty trillion in our book, and almost it is one third into local lending. Uh, which is the local corporates and uh, almost one third is into the India based lending, which is essentially ECBs, and uh, almost about 18 trillion is coming from the uh, trade finance. So, growth, growth is also in the same ratio. Yes. Just to clarify the point on uh, treasury income, the last quarter there was a little bit of accounting changes also that happened. Ah, that that is really helped this quarter? No. Not really, not really. In fact, much of it will depend upon if at all we book the revaluation gains. Yeah. Can we move to the next one? Uh, what the bank or NDFC uh, quarterly reset ki bajaye monthly reset ki option ki lene, jasi ki HDFC. So, SBI kya uh, quarterly pe stick karega ya monthly ka koi chance hai? Dekhi, aisa hai ki this is a much of it also is an option for the customer. It is not merely the bank's decision. So, if at all I may say so, our, uh, when we look at our MCLR based lending, Almost about uh, 45 percent, 50 40. percent would be 45 percent. 41 percent is MCLR. No, 41 percent is MCLR, but it is at six months pricing, six months repricing. Six months and one year maximum. 46 percent is six months, and then there are also one year. Yeah. So majority. All right, uh, that was the State Bank of India Chairman Dinesh Kara addressing the media after their stellar second uh, quarter numbers. Some of the interesting takeaways from the press conference include the fact that this kind of growth that we're seeing, especially on uh, the advances front, almost 20% for us, we are quite impressive, can continue. Uh, bulk of the growth in the corporate advances is actually coming from large corporates, and this is across sectors, as per Mr. Kara. He also said the margin trajectory looks good. There's already been some expansion in this quarter, and he expects that to continue continue going forward asset quality uh, we will ask more of the management on that front as well but overall good set of numbers there's nothing more the market could have asked for at this point of time uh, but on that note let's live into a short break uh, we will continue with more news and updates on the other side so stay with us